23rd and nearing Christmas, and my beloved Margaret has been bedridden for six long months now, and I'm not sure how much longer I will be able to stay by your side. I am busy with my studies. They've taken a great deal of my mind away from the world outside. It seems any more of me left these days is all in contribution to my work. If this is not sin enough, and Nurse of R has fallen ill as well, it has been under my care now for the last few weeks, and she is, dare I say it, one of the most poised creatures I've ever encountered. Would it be wrong for a man to ponder things about a woman as lovely? Margaret and I were to be married two months after her fever. It was very clear that there would be no marriage until her recovery. But if Margaret is to leave me, I do not know if I will have the power of will to resist the temptations of loss for Eva. It seems I am no longer in love with Margaret as I once was when she was well and responsive. Eva is like a swan, white and graceful, innocent and pure. God give me the strength to resist her call. Every night I down, she sings a song I can hear from my window. Why don't we head out of here for a while? I don't think Margaret would notice. You know, God will not watch if you stroke my cheek powder. I can't. I sing for you. No, you sing for the hallways and the rafters. No, I don't. I sing for you. Your wife, Margaret, is not there anymore, Powder. She never will be. How dare you say that? She's still my wife. Oh, but I know she'll never be better, Powder. Because I am Margaret. You can go and see her. You can watch her sleep. You can even hear her breathe. But there's only so much of Margaret left. When she fell ill, it was so I could rise, Potter. I'm what wanted out of Margaret. The longing, the demanding, the temptation, the sex, the damned. Take me, Potter. Take me.
gasoline motherfucker.